our folks at Chicago's world-famed Century of Progress, the spectacular fair that was started by a beam of light from the star Arcturus. People from every corner of the world came to see its magic and its marvels. No less than 22 millions of them came swarming into this colossal show to witness the brilliant handiwork of its modern, unparalleled ingenuity. Here is the famous avenue of flags, a beautiful flag-bedecked boulevard, every foot of its magnificent concourse filled with an endless stream of pleasure seekers. In gay attire, full of the holiday mood, keying their spirits to the glitter and sparkle of their surroundings, eager participants in the sweep and glory of a show unmatched in the annals of fair making. Like a sentinel commanding the sun stands the Hall of Science, saluting the waters of the shimmering lagoon. It is a typical example of the regal architecture that is to be found everywhere on the grounds, creating, together with its companions, a skyline of glowing monuments to beauty. Look at this dazzling performance of architectural effort, a symphony in steel and stone and glass, a tribute to structural perfection. With its graceful lines and commanding pylons, it offers a vivid modern contrast to an age-old Maya temple nearby. These majestic records of artistic achievement are to be seen everywhere. Visitors flock by the millions to drink in their glories. Following one upon the other, they create a picture that enthralls the eye with their sweep and majesty, a gorgeous climax to this vista of blue-green lagoon. Seen from the deck of a launch or across the rippling waters, this group makes an unforgettable impression. Visual music with chords of rainbow hues, the dream of the artist come true the hope of design made real. Mingling with the brisk tone of modern America, we find, too, the spice and flavor of the foreign. From Europe and the Orient come resplendent roofs of gold, exotic reminders of different times and civilizations, adding their individual touches to the scintillant pageant that has made the World's Fair such a unique adventure. Once it was Ferris wheel, but today it's the towering sky ride that offers the major thrill of the fair. These towers rise into the sky to the dizzy altitude of 628 feet. And what a view visitors got from the windows of these rocket riders. Traveling across the lagoon, one saw far below the fairgrounds in a molten glow of brilliance. Blues and reds and greens and yellows, all fused into a blazing kaleidoscope of color. Truly a fairyland of light. And now back to Earth. Here we once more are on one of the main avenues of the fair, amid that never-ending tide of humanity, pounding along in search of excitement. 44 million feet, dog tired and aching, but who cares about weary feet with all that whirl and glitter beckoning us on and on? To pause before this map-covered dome, the back view of the exhibit, a million years ago. Let's go around front and take a look. Here's King Kong himself and two of his gentle playmates entertaining the midway crowds. But this is only one of the countless bizarre and fascinating displays that made the midway a perpetual Mardi Gras of frolic. The midway, chief artery of thrills, city of million lights and spectacles, a blaze of flaming color, of sights and sounds and hurly-burly, teeming with magicians, sword swallowers, dragon rides, alligator fighters, Egyptian hotshaw girls, sideshow wonders, a midget village, and what else do you like? And rivaling this conglomeration of freaks and fakers are the bazaars from Belgium, Germany, France, Holland, and other countries. Enticing, with great bustle and ballyhoo, the curious visitor with their strange and tempting wares. And of course, no midway is complete without a few spine curlers. And here's our old friend and thrill maker, the roller coaster, providing heart throbs and spine chills aplenty. All kinds of visitors came to the fair. Here is Admiral Byrd's flagship, back from its adventures in the lands of snow and ice, to take a dominant position in the aggregation of queer craft and roaring planes that came to roost on the waters of the fair. In panorama, the north end of the fair presents a vista of sheer beauty, a glamorous setting for that galaxy of architectural gems. Seen from above, their commanding grace is clearer than ever casting over the scene a compelling note of progress, breathing forth the true meaning and spirit of this world's fair. Colors, tones, shapes, all sharply etched in brilliant design, a harmony of effects that captivate the mind. 
And now we come upon a most unique structure, the travel and transport building, presenting a dominant phase of industry in its most commanding aspects, a triumph of architectural design and balance, bold and austere in line, it serves as the symbolic landmark of that section of the fair dedicated to travel. And here is transportation in its most modern, thrilling expression. The Temple of Champions, with its clean-cut lines and splashing fountains, mingling beauty with utility. A proud symbol of the world's century of progress, stressing in particular the most universal mode of individual transportation. In the shadow of this modern architecture, crowds come daily to see how cars are subjected to acid tests of endurance. This miniature track, with its 45 degree side banks and its saucer turns, is the proving ground of car performance. The pit in the center, affectionately called Death Valley and Punishment Pit, subjects a car to a grueling examination of fitness. It looks as though something is happening. Let's go down and see. Here is a real surprise, Harry Hart national racing champion and daredevil of the racetrack. No fashion shows for Harry. He's going to show us the real points of this thoroughbred. All right, Harry, let's go. He's off in a smooth getaway, and now watch him go. 35, 40, 45, 50 miles an hour, zooming madly around the track, having the time of his life. And these mobs watching him are getting one grand thrill. Listen to those tires screech and scream as he takes the curves. Look at that car hug the road like a beetle. Could a racing model do better? Here he comes again on the far side. Watch out! <laughs> oh, that was Harry up to his old tricks again. Beautiful balance to that car. Did you see him take that 45 degree incline? Just a little of the old racetrack fever. Here he comes again. And again he takes that thrilling tilt. I'll say that car has balance. I can see now why she was chosen the winner. And now watch Harry come down the ramp. At full speed, here he comes. Sally, what performance. He must be awfully confident of that car he's driving. And now he's away again, burning up the track with smooth, unadulterated power. Here he comes down the ramp. What's up, Harry? Oh, a trick, stopping in the middle of a hill. He must have perfect brakes to get away with that. Now do it at full speed, Harry. And there he tears, hell bent for horseplay. Up, down, stop. Nice work, Harry. No swerve, pitch, or brake throw. Those brakes must be good. And now he's speeding into the home stretch and pulls up on a dime. Hands off the wheel, a beautiful ending to a grand performance. And one sweet car, too. Nice driving, Harry. What now? Two more speed boys. Looks as though this is going to be a contest. All right, boys, let's see your stuff. Look at those terrors plow through the sand. See them go down into those shell holes and climb right out without a pause, without a halt. They take these nerve-shattering bumps in full stride at top speed without batting an eyelash. Ride them, cowboy. They buck and jump and keep right on. Oh, -ho. I've seen tough babies before, but never anything like this. What a brutal test for those cars. Motor, gears, and body, every part of them, certainly come in for a cruel and terrific hammering. Boy, look at those slithering turns, those soul-jarring leaps. No one watching these demons on wheels can count their strength and sturdiness. And can they take it? What's more, these cars absorb this fearful punishment not once, but six times a day. And judging from the crowd, this show is a great hit for the world's fair visitors. Look! Bang! Crash! Look at this one tear along. Look out! Oh, he's over. Hope nothing's happened. No, here's the driver. Safe and sound. Not only safe, but enjoying himself. Looks as though he did it on purpose. I'll bet he just did it just to prove the safety of those all steel bodies. Let's see the damage. Put her up on her wheels. Boy, was I fooled. That car is as good as new, just a little shake-up. But what's that to these all-steel body punishment fiends? Can you beat that? Off on its own power again. I bet all you folks are wondering what kind of a car that is. Why, it's a Plymouth. My hat's off to that bus. 
Those high-geared performers never falter. They are the actors in a show that must go on, which does go on, not once or twice, but six full times a day. Every single day, week after week, month after month, and with the tenacity of real champions, they keep right on, unmindful of the exhausting effects of the most thorough test ever devised, thus exemplifying real achievement, real progress in motor car safety and construction. Let's give those drivers and those sturdy cars a great big hand. <laughs>